right, so these are kind of the different examples of uh, fractions that you might see. When you're finding domain restrictions, it doesn't matter if anything cancels or not. Okay? All we're doing is we're finding the, the values of x that would give us division by 0. Okay? So you might be given one where you have just the factor itself. If that's the case, what value of x would give you a 0 here? So you know that x can't be negative 10, and the way that you would express that using interval notation is negative infinity to negative 10, and then negative 10 to infinity, and then the union of sets symbol in between would indicate it's uh, several multiple sets in that solution. Okay. Right. If you have a uh, if you have a fraction as your x, that's still fine. Again, when we take this given uh, expression and set it equal to zero, uh, you can either physically set it up as 8x plus 11 equals or not equal to zero and then solve. 8x does not equal negative 11. Divide by 8. So there is our restricted value. We would set it up in the same way from negative infinity to that restricted value, negative 11 eighths, and then negative 11 eighths to infinity, union of set symbol in between. Okay, but you can also just use the shortcut for that, and this will be the case when we start doing uh, factor or uh, canceling factors as well, or uh, uh, solving problems using factoring is uh, you can uh, find the value of zero or value of x that gives you the zero here by just taking the opposite of your constant divide by your coefficient. So the opposite of 11 is negative 11 divide by 8 and that gives you your solution. All right. Now you may also find that you have uh, mul multiple factors in the denominator. If that's the case, what you're going to do, uh, if you have a linear factor or a linear expression in your denominator, you simply solve for, uh, set it equal to zero and solve for x. If you have multiple factors, you can factor it and set each factor equal to zero. So if I were to do that in this case, if I notice I have a linear factor, I could just take negative 9x minus 63, set that not equal to zero. And if I did that, I could uh, add 63 to both sides, divide by negative 9, and I'd get my x does not equal negative 7. I could then plug that in from negative infinity to negative 7, and from negative 7 to infinity, union of set symbol, and that gives me my solution. Okay, I could also try to factor this. I do see that even though this is a linear expression or lim linear form, I can factor out a negative 9, giving me a positive x and a positive 7. I can then set that variable factor equal to zero and restrict that value. Okay. If I'm giving, uh, given an expression in my denominator that is not linear, meaning it's a quadratic in this case or if it has uh, higher degree powers, what you would, could look to do is to factor it completely. So if I factor an x out of each of these terms, leaving an x minus 3, Notice I get these two different now uh, restricted values. X can't be 0, but it also can't be 3. If you have multiple restricted values, then you're just going to extend your um, interval to include um, multiple, more than just two intervals. You're now going to have three intervals. You do need to make sure that they go from left to right on a number line. So 0 comes before 3, so I'm going to go from negative infinity to 0 and then from 0 to 3, and then from 3 to infinity. Union of set symbol in between. These have to go in order from least to greatest. Okay, if they don't, if you have them in a different order, it's not going to work. Okay, intervals are always represented in terms of uh, just like it would be on a number line. So in this next example right here, what we do is we take our denominator, set it, uh, find the values of x that would make this a 0. Will this ever be 0? Can x squared plus 7, is it ever going to be a value of 0? If you subtract a 7, can x being squared ever equal a negative number? No. So in this case, there's no restriction, right? This is another way to see a no restricted value. So our domain is all real numbers. doesn't matter what you plug in for x. Okay? When you square it, 
and then add 7, it's never going to equal a 0. And in this last example, again, you don't have to cancel any factors, which we'll talk about later in this chapter, but you do need to factor the denominator. And we're going to reverse FOIL. The leading coefficient is a 1. So what two factors of positive 63 have a total sum of 16? 7 and 9. And so if you set each of those equal to 0, you get x can't be negative 7 or negative 9. Now, the one thing that you have to make sure of is uh, it's, you're not just uh, listing these restricted values. In this particular case, you're being asked to uh, identify the domain as an interval. And so which of these is going to be further to the left? Negative 9. So we start with that one, negative infinity to negative 9, then negative 9 to negative 7, then negative 7 to infinity, union of set symbol in each one. And remember the union of set symbol, it's available in the equation editor but it's also just the capital U. 